questions people ask is, you know, what would he be doing now or, or you know, what would his life be? And I, I think, you know, Elvis, is, Elvis would always be a part of music, no matter what. I mean, it was in his blood. I think that maybe he'd be going into gospel, maybe even preaching a little bit. He loved to have, you know, he loved to teach and, you know, privileged children are, you know. And, and Elvis wanted her to have everything. Because he didn't really know. He, no, he too grew up very, very poor. Yeah, po. And, and it's exactly what you mm. said the other day. Po, right, mm -hmm. po. <laughs> she called her neighbors and her friends and her loved ones and her kinfolk and Aunt Sally and Uncle Joe. <laughs> and Cousin Vinny. <laughs> and everybody else you could think of. Boy, you know. I remember when I was a little kid and we was downtown with my family and we was poor and we lived in the government projects. We was downtown and my mother had so just a little bit of money in her purse. Didn't have hardly anything left after we got downtown. Man, when are we gonna get back? <laughs> so I said, I gotta go to the bathroom. I was about you know, I was about nine, ten years old. I went down to the men's room, walking along there, I looked down there on the floor, and there was a twenty dollar bill down on the floor. <laughs> and you'd have thought I'd have hit the hit the jackpot, you know. <laughs> I mean back then, ten dollar twenty dollar bill, brother, that was like a that was like a hundred dollar bill, you know. Even twenty dollar bill I didn't go to the natives to say I didn't go to the men's room. I ran right back upstairs. <laughs> I said, Mama, 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 Mama. Look right. Look right. She said, hide that thing down there. Don't show anybody that money. Put it back down in your pocket. Waiting <laughs> in, the, in the hotel room, he would go over and pick up the Gideon Bible, and he would open it, and he'd see Oh, and he'd read the text that he just opened to, and he would give a little talk about it. And he'd say, now what do you think, Mr. Dolores? What does that say to you? Or he'd hand me the Bible and say, you open it and see what you get to. But he loved that. God led me to open the Bible. Open the Bible up. Just all, I wasn't looking for nothing. I wasn't looking for a scripture. I wasn't looking for anything. I didn't stum through there. I didn't go through no references. I didn't, I didn't look it up in a concordance. I wasn't looking for any particular verse. I just opened the Bible. I just flipped it open. And, and I pointed my finger. <laughs> I just pointed my finger. And this was the verse. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Like that. God, God did that. He, he brought that to me. He gave me that word. That happened like five times. Four or five times. I opened the Bible and just started reading. And every verse that I read spoke of the same, the same word, same kind of word. Elvis... Uh had the book in his hand and he gave it to someone he said open the book to any page and the person opened it and started to read Elvis recited the rest of the page by memory and explained it to the person he would jot down and and underline things that he'd want to talk to somebody about and he'd have initials talk to somebody about so and so and somebody else about so and so the old man is dead you don't you don't dig up something that's dead you leave it buried. The Bible says everyone that's called of God is also glorified. When we come into newness of life with Christ, transformation takes place. I'm no longer under the power of the law, but now I'm under the power of the grace of God that raised Jesus from the dead. 
I'm no longer walking in the old self and the old flesh and the world and the things that I used to walk in in this life in sin having dominion over me now that I've been raised from the dead transformations taking place like we're butterfly you know on caterpillar that turned into butterfly you know caterpillar was in the cocoon wrapped himself up and he came he, he had his birth and came out as a beautiful butterfly to flew away the old man must die his dreams so that the new man may live he's leaving that old life he's throwing off them rags he's throwing off what he knew before everything that held him down everything that, that, that identified him he was throwing it off of him that old man is dead he left the table left everything just left it sitting there all that money, <laughs> bags of money just left sitting there. Every man owes God. And you pay God with your life. He's not going to tell you anything less than that. I gave him my house, I gave him my car, I gave him my family, I gave him my money, I gave him my land, I gave him my cattle, I gave him my dog, my cat, I gave everything I got. That was the most important thing in his life was that money. Jesus walked up to him, looked in his eyeballs. He said, follow me. Immediately. Immediately. He left the money. <laughs> All the people standing around, the line of mud, the lines and lines of people that wait. He left his life behind. Because there's nothing, to, there's nothing really to give up. You know what? The world of sin and shame is really nothing. No matter how much people think they have, they have nothing. Whatever you think you have is nothing. No matter how much you think you gain, you gain nothing compared to Christ. I'm all shook up. Amen. The Lord's going to shake us up. I used to do it with my legs a lot, but now I'm up my arms and shoulders. <laughs> I'm getting too old now to do it with my legs. I ain't never going to forget that. Man. <laughs> I used to have a gold jacket once. You know. I'm not going to concern myself with what I was and what I had before. Forget about Elvis, I want to see Jesus. Amen. <laughs> you know, forget about all these other people, I want to see Jesus. Somebody says, why are you doing what you're doing? And I say, look at Jesus. Because she said, if I can just touch the human's garment, I know I'll be healed. Yes. She pushed her way through the crowd. The crowd's around Jesus, so many people. It was like sardines in the can. Jesus was just closed in all around. You couldn't get to him, man. That was worse than trying to get to the president. I mean, you know, yeah. just probably hundreds of people stand all around, pressing in, wanting to get near Jesus. That's where I'd have been. Mm -hmm. How many have been right there? Man, I'd mm -hmm. want to be in that crowd, get as close to Jesus as I can. Mm -hmm. Forget about Elvis, I want to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of popular people that's been popular throughout the years that have said, that's the image. But if you got to really know me, it's a whole lot different than the image. Mm -hmm. Elvis said that about himself. Mm -hmm. Does he mean so much that suddenly you might not even understand why? But you get up and you leave everything behind. Everything that you knew, everything you longed for, everything that you worked for, everything that you struggled for, everything that you worked so hard in your life to achieve. I've come this far in life. Am I going to give it all up? Am I going to lay it aside like it's nothing? Yes, because Jesus is everything. What he has to offer me is greater than all the world. What he has to offer me is something the whole wide world cannot give me. If a man gains the whole world and loses his soul, what does it profit him? So Jesus is putting the value of the soul, the enrichment of the soul, far greater than all the riches of the world. Do you love me more than these? Do you? Hallelujah. You know, it's like the song says, 
I'm going to do it my way. Well, I'm not going to do it my way. I'm going to do it God's way. Amen. This morning, I want to give you a thought. <clears throat> you've, heard that, you've heard that old song that somebody sang, You Were Always On My Mind. You were always on my mind. You were always on my mind. Hallelujah. When people come to church, that's what they want to do. I know that God is real. He's the real in my soul. <laughs> my God is real, for He has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like a pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. <laughs> We've been tasting and sipping, drinking a little here, drinking a little there, eating a little bit of this. I was looking at your rings, eating a little bit of this. But the same God that made you made him too. These men with broken hearts. Everybody in this world just lives their life as, as they see it. So many people who, who think they have the happiness, it turns out, it turns around and bites them. I'd sure like to be famous. If you got out there in that kind of in that world, no. you find out maybe real quick you don't want to be there. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be in that I don't want to be in that world. <laughs> I don't care about that. There's too many problems out there, man. There's too many heartache and headaches. And There's too much pressure in this world. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you satisfied with the image you've established? Well, the image is one thing, and a human being is another, you know. How close is the image to the man? It's, 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 it's very hard to live up to an image, I'll put it that way. You took care of business. You showed what was in your heart, and you got up and you did it. You've shown that you really love God. You've shown that you don't want to stay there. You've shown that this is wrong. i got to get up and move. And you got up and moved. Taking care of business. Getting to it and getting it done. Behold what carefulness. Take care of business. I'm a new person. My life is different. My mind is different. My heart is different. Oh, yeah. That's where it is. And that's what Leon was trying to tell me on the phone. He laid there dying, gasping for breath, and he was rejoicing. I remember another friend of mine, thank you, man. Thank you very much. <laughs>